Hi friends, welcome to Curious University, better known as Curious You. I'm Miss Tracy. And I'm Miss Katie Jane. Today's story time is all about names. And I've been thinking, you know my name, but I don't know your name. Can you share that with me now? That is a very nice name. Now that we know each other's names, why don't we listen to some facts all about names. In 1911, only one in three people, 37% of Americans had a middle name. Most only had a forename, first name, and a surname, last name. Today, three quarters of children are given second names. 80%, and one in 10 new babies, 11%, is given two or more middle names. That's fact. A Chinese name is most commonly composed of three characters, one character for the family name and two for the given name. There is no equivalent of a middle name in Chinese. The reason Chinese people write their surname first is to show respect to their ancestors. That's a fact. When we abbreviate a word or phrase, we shorten it. Abbreviations that are formed from the first letters of your first, middle, and last names are called your initials. That's a fact. A monogram is a person's three-letter initials and can be used to personalize clothing and belongings. There is more than one way to monogram an item. In a traditional monogram, the last name initial will be the largest and in the center with the first and middle initial on the left and right. If the initials in the monogram are all the same size, then the initials will follow the order of first, middle, and last. That's a fact! The most popular name for boys born in the U.S. in 2019 was Liam. Noah was the second most popular and Oliver was the third. Olivia was the most popular name for girls, followed by Emma and Ava. That's a fact. The most popular boy name in the U.S. over the past 100 years is James, with more than 4.5 million boys receiving the name during the last century. Mary is the most popular girl name in the U.S. over the past 100 years. Almost 3.5 million girls have been named Mary during the last century. That is a fact. This week's story is based on the book Alma and how she got her name by Juana Martinez Neal. This is about a girl with a really long name and she doesn't like it one bit. But maybe her dad can change her mind when he tells her why he named her that very long name. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela had a long name. Too long if you asked her. My name is too long, Daddy. It never fits. Come here. Let me tell you the story of your name. Then you decide if it fits. Sophia was your grandmother. She loved books, poetry, jasmine flowers, and of course, me. She was the one who taught me how to read. I love books and flowers too, Daddy. And you too, of course. <laughs> I am Sophia. Esperanza was your great-grandmother. She hoped to travel but never left the city where she was born. Her only son grew up to cross the seven seas, and wherever he, her sailor son, went, so did Esperanza's heart. The world is so big! Daddy, I want to go see it! You and me, together. <laughs> Esperanza. Jose was my father. He was an artist with a big family like many people back then. Early each morning, he walked to the mountains and the plazas to paint every day of his life. 
Sometimes he, I went along. Uh, your grandfather taught me to see and love our people. I wake up early every day and I draw a lot too. In fact, this morning, I drew a <gasps> kitty cat for you, Daddy. Oh, thank you, Alma. I am Jose. Pura was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors were always with us, watching over us. Now, when you were born, she tied a red string to your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. I am Pura. Now, Candela was your other grandmother, and she always stood up for what was right. I am Candela. I love the story of my name, Daddy. Now, tell, wait a minute. What, where, where's Alma? Tell me about where Alma comes from. I picked the name Alma just for you. You are the first and the only Alma, and you will make your own story. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela is my name. And it fits me just right. I am Alma, and I have a story to tell. Did you know that a blind man named Louis Braille developed a system of printing and writing for people who are blind or visually impaired? This alphabet is based on a six dot code in various combinations, and it is referred to as Braille, named after the man who created it. We're going to use the Braille alphabet plus paper, markers, glue, and beans to write out a secret name. And then I'll reveal what that secret name is using another cool technique that involves paper, white crayon, and watercolor. Let's get started. You're going to need to access this Braille alphabet template, which is linked to the library's blog post about Storytime and also to this video. I use this template to create the name. Now make sure when you're doing the dots that you think about spacing. Do you notice that those little letters kind of look like dominoes? So I kind of think of the domino shape and the six dots on a domino when I'm creating the code. So I like to use the black to make the dots because that's really clear for me to see. And every place that there's a black dot on my paper, I'm gonna cover it with a dot of glue and then put a bean on it so that it will be a raised surface like Braille. Now, real Braille materials don't have any color on them but I will be using black beads today so that it's very easy for you to see on the video. All right, here I go. Now you'll notice that some of my letters repeat. This letter and this letter are the same. This letter and this letter are the same. And this letter and this letter are all the same. Can you figure out what the name is using the Braille code? Let's see if you're right. Now it's time for the big reveal. For the reveal, I have used white crayon to write the name on a white piece of paper. And to reveal it, I'm going to brush watercolor across it. Now, since we want to be able to see very clearly, do you think I should use light colored watercolors like yellow and orange? No, you're right. We should use darker ones like black or blue or purple or brown. And something else to consider is Boop, 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 boop. What if we don't have watercolor at our house? Well, you can make watercolor simply by adding paint to water. All right, I'm going to use black because I have a lot of black in my watercolor pot. 
All right, let's see. <gasps> It says V-E-V-A-J-A-N-E. -E. That spells Viva Jane. Viva Jane is my grandmother's name. That's also where part of my name comes from. My name is Katie Jane, and the Jane comes from my Grammy, Viva Jane. Join us next Thursday for a curiosity break at the Frog Pond. Until then, stay curious. This story time is brought to you by the Hoover Public Library.